it's time to stop the rape of our freedom, the violation of our personal rights, our civil rights, our human rights. It's time to realize that the cannabis movement is a peace movement, the cannabis movement is a human rights movement, the cannabis human movement is a civil rights movement. They've been laughing at us, they've been ridiculing us, they've been making fun of us, they've been denigrating us, they've been ridiculing us, they've been arresting us, they've actually killed many of us, they've shot many of us. They have stolen our children from us to be raised by foster parents that tell our children, oh, your parents are bad, your parents don't love you, your parents are criminals because they had a pot plant in the same house as you, and they're swilling their, they're swilling their alcohol, and they're smoking their cigarette, and you know, cigarettes kill 400,000 people every year, alcohol kills 40,000 people every, well, alcohol kills 40,000 people from a toxic reaction and from, from disease, how many, how many wife beatings, how many murders, how many rapes, how many suicides, how many car accidents from alcohol, it's, you know, how many millions of people die from alcohol every year? I want to know. I mean, it's, it's a disgrace. And we're just talking about America. I mean, all over the world, how many people die? 40,000 people die from tobacco in America. What about the world? How many people die from tobacco, right? How many people die from marijuana in 10,000 years of use? Zero. Zilch. Nobody's ever died from a toxic reaction or an overdose of marijuana. You could eat. You know, in 1988, the DEA administrative judge Francis Young. Thank you, bro. I had four hours sleep. Is this the National Stereo Underground? Oh, Valhalla has arrived. All right. You didn't know I was nervous, but I didn't think that the last band was going to show up. Um, anyway, this has been an incredible disgrace to our country. It's un these laws are un-American. Uh, Judge Francis Young said that Marijuana is one of the safest non-toxic therapeutic substances in the world. You can eat, if you eat 10 raw potatoes, did you know this? 10 raw potatoes could kill you from a toxic reaction. But you could eat 10 pounds of marijuana and you'd be sick as hell. And you'd be throwing up real bad and you'd be unable to walk, but you ain't gonna die. You can't die from marijuana, it won't kill you, man, because it's an incredibly beautiful, wonderful, loving, peaceful plant. It's a friendly, loving, healing herb. It's a herb, it's not even a drug. And they have lied and lied and lied and lied and lied to advance these, these disgusting laws that are enemies of justice, that are undermining a general respect for the rule of law among millions of young Americans that think, well, these laws all screwed up, so I shouldn't obey any law. And if, you know, I smoked pot, they said it was terrible. And they were wrong, so I bet cocaine must be okay too, and I bet heroin must be okay, and I bet methamphetamine must be cool too, because they lie. They lie. They lied about pot, so they must be lying about heroin. They lie about cocaine. And, uh, and you know, how many people die from all that stuff, man? I mean, right now, while we're having a great time, there's somebody hiding in their closet smoking a crack pipe, man. Freaking out in the dark, you know, hearing voices and shit. There's somebody smoking meth right now. Right now, man, probably, probably within earshot of here somewhere, there's somebody shooting heroin, there's somebody's doing crack, right? And the drug war actually promotes that stuff. Do you know they spend more money putting people away for cannabis than for methamphetamine, cocaine, heroin, ecstasy, all combined? 90% of the, of the money spent in America for the drug war, it's a war against cannabis users. It's not a drug war. Drug war, excuse me, drug war? The pharmaceutical companies are selling billions of dollars worth of drugs they spend five bucks on the drug and they charge 500 bucks and it kills you. And it's addictive and it's toxic and it ruins your liver and your kidneys and your brain. And they call it medicine and they call our medicine, which has never killed anybody, drugs. Because the drug war is one big, ugly, rancid, pus-filled, infected lie. And they use that lie to destroy the lives of decent, wonderful, chilling brothers and sisters who are iry and who are cool. You know how many cool people are in prison getting prison raped by somebody, man, over pot? It's a disgrace. And that's why I'm willing to risk my life. My, when I say risk my life, I mean, this is so stressful. I've just had three trips to the doctor, to the hospital, thinking I have a heart attack, man, from anxiety attacks over hemp fest. I have developed what's called premature atrial complex of my heart, skipping a beat stuff, because of the stress of Seattle hemp fest. I'm not kidding, man. My ears ring every day of my life. My ears ring so bad that I'm a Buddhist, actually. I'm a Tibetan Buddhist. I can't go to the temple anymore. 
to, to the monastery because it's silent. And my ears ring so fucking loud from being up here for 20 years, right, that I can't even do that because it drives me crazy. It's a sacrifice. And all of our staff members have been here for like 12 hours, 16 hours in the same sweaty shirt that they wore yesterday because they get one staff shirt for a three-day hemp fest. And they have been, they got blisters. I have blisters all on my toes last night when I got home. And I'll be here till Wednesday picking up cigarette butts when we're out of here. We'll all be here for days after you're all gone. 90% of our staff will leave after tomorrow, and then one, like two, one, two. maybe a hundred of us will be here tearing all this down, packing it out. If we don't get everything out by by, by Tuesday, $800 a day for every item left in the park every day. It's very intimidating, it's very scary. And, uh, and we do it anyway because it's the right thing to do because we're Americans and we love our country. I love America, I love this country where you can have a, a hemp fest because of our constitution, our free speech, and our freedom of assembly. And we do it anyway, man. And we never know what's gonna happen. It's a total leap of faith. I'm like, my God, it's three days. What's gonna happen? Are the volunteers gonna be there on Friday? We're gonna have a staff? Well, let's get this out of your way, man. We'll get that totally out of your way. Oh, you want it there? Oh, man, that's different. I could roll with you. I like that. So anyway, I'm done preaching to y'all, man. I just want you to know the reality. That's my heart song. Because, you know, we're doing it, you know, brother. We're doing this, man, and it's crazy. But we're gonna do it. And no matter what it takes. And uh, when I sign the permit for Seattle Hemp Fest, I'm going, oh my God, what am I doing? I said, on the permit, it says, you will take full responsibility for everything that happens at Seattle Hemp Fest. And I sign that bugger every year. And you guys have never let me down. I love you, the greatest audience in the world.